Good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully we can um, give you a boost after lunch. Welcome to the session on building new customer experiences with Salesforce and AWS. I'm Janine Banks. I'm the general manager of industry and ISV solutions at AWS. And I'm responsible for making sure that AWS Cloud is the best place to run your industry-specific workloads and applications, as well as supporting the ISV services and applications that you use to run your business. I'm joined today by Sedvana Duffy from Autodesk. And we'll be together presenting the session, both giving you an introduction and then diving deep into Autodesk's use cases and how they're building new customer experiences. Yay. OK, we're back in business. So recently, Salesforce conducted their annual study on the state of the connected customer. And there were a number of insights that they collected from that research, and it included thousands of consumers and business buyers. And a couple of those that really jumped out to us is one, uh, that 76% of the respondents in that study said that it's easier than ever for them to take their business elsewhere. And that's really important because as digital transformation is something that companies are all pursuing, um, we stay front and center what that's really all about. It's to stay competitive, it's to stay ahead, really, in your industry and ensure that you're serving and experience to your customers that differentiates your company from whoever else is out there. Another interesting insight from that study was that nine and a half times more customers are likely to view artificial intelligence as revolutionary. And so it's interesting that consumers as well as business buyers find that the use of artificial intelligence is something that can really provide them a, a, an experience that's unique, that is memorable. And so it's important that we're making it easy to leverage technologies like AI um, under the covers and in building applications so that those experiences can be delivered to customers as they expect. As part of that study also, Salesforce worked with Catherine Fetus and Hayes, who's co-author of Beyond Advertising, and it touched on how it's important to provide an end-to-end -end customer journey that ties together different customer touch points and so that you can really engage your customers anytime, any place, as they transition between those touch points. And that's a really relevant idea and, and topic for discussion, uh, both for Salesforce and AWS, but also for Autodesk, as you'll hear later, and how we're enabling integration between our services to make that touch point uh, journey across those touch points even easier. So we believe Fundamentally, it's, it's critical to leverage the cloud to drive that transformation and build those new customer experiences. And like I mentioned, it's about differentiating your company, but it's also overall enabling you to innovate faster. And it's not just about doing things like a startup, but it's a cultural change. It's a change in how you operate and build teams, uh, both from a development standpoint, but also overall in business. And we think that the cloud can enabling, enable those shifts. Also, transforming on your terms. It's not about running after the latest and greatest technology and the latest you know, trend. But what's really important is what are the strategies and objectives that your organization has? And how can you leverage the cloud to achieve those goals at the pace that makes sense for your company? And then, of course, reducing risk. I remember a decade ago, any conversation about cloud was focused on, is it secure? And I don't think I can go to the cloud. Or if I put something in the cloud, um, you know, I'm going to do that very carefully, very selectively. Uh, or maybe at some point in the future, it was sort of pushed out into the future. And now, the cloud is the new normal, right? And so it's not about if, but how fast can I do it? What applications can I move? Um, and, and how to kind of drive that transformation. So at AWS Cloud, we are here to help you do that transformation, enabling that new level of speed and innovation, and also just fundamentally helping you overcome 
you know, the, the level of cost that legacy uh, and on-premise um, environments uh, that have been built over years and years uh, can, can have. And so how can you benefit from the cloud, not only from speed perspective, but to have the, the ability to scale to the needs of your customers and at the pace that your business is growing? And we work with customers across really every segment, from startups to enterprises, uh, public sector organizations, and also ISVs like Autodesk. One interesting thing that you may know about AWS and really Amazon overall is uh, one of our key principles we call leadership principles is this idea of customer obsession. And I remember before joining Amazon a year ago, um, I heard about this, but I didn't really know how did it really play out in real life? And is it really, you know, is it, what's different about this idea of customer obsession? Then what you would hear is values and principles that other companies have. And I've come to see that, wow, it, it really has been a shift and it's been a lot of fun. And in AWS, it's led us to ensure that 90% or more of what's on our roadmap at any time is directly a result of what our customers and our partners have asked for. And so that's just one of the ways that we're just making sure that we're staying very focused on our customers and working backwards and leveraging the cloud to help you innovate and move faster as a company. So I wanted to share a little bit about how Salesforce and AWS are working together. And this week, we just uh, put out an announcement about how we're expanding our strategic alliance in a number of areas. Uh, over the past few years, we've grown that alliance more and more, and we've done a number of different product integrations, for example, with our Amazon Connect product and the sales um, and service cloud uh, solutions from Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce is also uh, moving more of their applications onto AWS. It's uh, live in Canada and uh, Australia, for example. Um, there are a number of acquired applications that Salesforce has, such as Quip and Heroku, that have been built from the ground up on AWS. And then, of course, within Amazon as a whole, we are embracing many of those uh, applications and core Salesforce for CRM uh, in our company. So we're really working closely together using each other's services, but this expanded strategic alliance is how do we take that further to more deeply integrate our services so that there are things that you're doing and heavy lifting that you're doing to use those services together today that it really should just be much easier. And we've talked to many, many of our customers, and we're hearing some very consistent themes around the ways that they want to use our services together and have already implemented some scenarios. You'll hear some from Autodesk today. And so we're committed in our alliance to going forward, making sure that that's available to you out of the box. There are a number of pre-built pipelines from, uh, to move data from Salesforce into AWS uh, to be able to leverage events that are generated as Salesforce platform events and using those events to raise and trigger processing of services in AWS. There's also, uh, we wanna make sure that even though our clouds have different network boundaries and security constructs, that we're rationalizing that behind the scenes, making it easier to traverse our clouds and use them natively together uh, without having to wait for security audits and assessments and approvals to be able to use those services. Um, so there are a range of areas that we're working together, and more of those things we will be announcing uh, you know, at reInvent, which is our annual show, AWS show, uh, it, coming in November this year, and then also making uh, some of these things available next year. So it's exciting because we're able to respond to the needs of partners and customers like Autodesk to enable you to move faster and to leverage our services in new ways. And ultimately, what we hear is a consistent theme overall is customers are saying, hey, I want to do more with my Salesforce data because uh, there's a statistic out there is based, like one in every five organizations are using Salesforce as a single source of truth for their customers and to manage how they engage and drive customer success. So I would like to, again, introduce Svetlana to come up and share with us the story that Autodesk has. 
Hello everyone, uh, my name is Svetlana Duffy and I'm Director of Data and Automation Platforms at Autodesk. My, uh, I'm responsible for managing all engineering teams um, that do development on Autodesk go-to-market platforms and Salesforce and Amazon Web Services are a pretty significant part of my technology portfolio. So now that you know who I am, who is Autodesk? Autodesk makes software for people who make things. If you have ever driven a high-performance car, admiring a towering skyscraper, or simply watched an award-winning movie, the chances are you have experienced what our customers are doing with our software. Millions of design professionals, engineers, architects, um, and digital artists use our software to unlock their creativity and solve important business, design, and environmental changes, ev challenges every day. And to look forward into the future, we are also providing free software for all educators and students worldwide, no matter where they are in the world. And this is important because the next generation will do things much differently. We are seeing a convergence across all industry of how the things are designed and made, and we are very well prepared to meet that challenge. Our products include architecture and construction, we have media and entertainment collection, and we also um, have a design, uh, product design and manufacturing. Our success at Autodesk is predicated upon our customer success. And in order uh, for our customers to be successful, they need to find a value in every interaction that they have with our company. In order for us to achieve our goals um, or that strategy, we have three important goals. First, we need to transition our business model to subscription. Then next, we need to digitize the company. And last but not least, we inspire to reimagine the construction and, uh, and manufacturing industries. Before I talk about how my team is helping digitizing Autodesk, I do want to give you a sense of our Salesforce and AWS footprint. We have been a customer of Salesforce for more than 10 years, and we are about three years um, into the AWS adoption, specifically in the context of sales support and marketing domains at Autodesk. We have uh, 20,000 users, more than 3,000 community, customer community users, 2,000 APIs requests per day. Um, our team is geographically dispersed across Bay Area, Singapore, and India, and we have about 120 Salesforce and AWS developers. And then last but not least, we are an agile workshop with very mature practices, and we deliver more than 20 new feature enablement releases per um, year. In order to be a subscription company, it is very important that you know your customers and you empower your, uh, your customer-facing teams with the information they need to better engage with your customers. Autodesk is a 35-year-old company and we have a lot of challenges. Our data is in many places, we have many legacy systems, Yes, we are a big customer of Salesforce, but what we realize is that having data only from Salesforce is not sufficient to create the insights that we needed to support our digital transformation. We needed data from our uh, web interactions, from our products, from our enterprise systems, and combine them uh, to provide powerful insights, and then, last but not least, put them at the fingertips of our sales and support agents so they can make better decisions. And we have achieved that with three solutions. Um, we have created a data supply chain, BI reporting, and predictive and prescriptive analytics. As a result, we have seen um, significant improvement in our sales outcomes in terms of ability to drive additional revenue from piracy, improve demand generation. We have common metrics, and we are able to provide valuable recommendations to our sales and support agents of how to better engage with our customers. So how did we do that? Um, on a high level, um, the first part was to make sure that we can collect and combine data into a single place, um, which we have done through enabling of the data supply chain, and we collected the data from various places into um, AWS S3. We have built a predictive analytics um, 
solution that allow us to run various machine learning models on the data that we have collected. And then we have an ability to expose the advanced analytic models, ad analytics models that have been created in AWS into service cloud and sales cloud. And then uh, we also realized the power of the data we have collected and we democratized it. So we allow our sales marketing and support teams to connect to our data lake and um, be able to use their own tools so they can generate their own insights. This is how Salesforce and AWS are helping us achieve that goal. From Salesforce, we extract um, objects like opportunities, leads, customers, uh, partners. We also load data from various other enterprise systems like Marketo, Adobe, all of you who have a large enterprise landscape have many sources that you would like to combine with Salesforce. And then last but not least, we have the clicks from the use of our products and then the web interactions of our customers. We use various ingestion patterns to get the data into AWS. So the main tools here are AWS Glue, uh, Kinesis, and Lambda. And what tool you use depends really on the source of the, uh, the source system that you're ingesting the data from. Then we um, further process the data using, um, again, Glue um, and other uh, tools like Spark, uh, our predictive analytics suite includes ability for our data scientists to plug in their AI framework of choice. Uh, mostly they use Python libraries, um, they use also R, and uh, recently we have also enabled Amazon SageMaker, so they can run their machine learning models and they can create their advanced analytics um, to, um, products, which we store in Amazon Redshift, and then through API or custom integrations, we connect to Salesforce and we expose that data into the workflows of the um, support or sales agents. For BI reporting, uh, we are using um, the access layer, which is primarily um, Athena. Um, we are allowing uh, people to connect with different tools. Looker is the tool of choice because it has a seamless integration. However, we have a very strong demand for people to use ClickView as well as Tableau. Now, let's look um, into more details in the data supply chain. The data supply chain is nothing but a standardized way of propagating and procuring data between various systems. And for Autodesk, we uh, define it with three main components. They are different both from their business use, but also from the technology that is necessary to enable them. The first is uh, the product and web data collection. This is a high velocity, um, high volume data that we collect from um, our products. Uh, we have instrumented all our products using SDKs, and we also collect um, data from our web uh, sites, which we instrumented using Telium. We have um, more than 8 billion events a month uh, from 100, uh, more than 100 plus products. The next set is enterprise data collection, and this is connecting to various enterprise systems that are used across Autodesk. We have connected more than 25 um, enterprise systems that we use, and we, uh, we have all that data into S3 today. Um, the way uh, how we go about it is trying to create patterns um, that we can reuse uh, depending on the type of ingestion that the system allows. Uh, there are two main ingestion types that we support. One is a passive source ingestion where we need to go and pull the data periodically from the system. And the other one is if the source system is able to create change events, we go um, and use an event-based ingestion. And then the last component is the data consumption. We use that for two main um, use cases. One is integrating the data to Salesforce and other systems that need to either uh, consume data from the uh, data lake or consume products that we have built on the data lake. And then reporting and analytics, which is allowing the users to plug in their BI tools and uh, create reports on top of the data that we have. 
from a BI and analytics, analytics reporting uh, capabilities, we have enabled three main um, groups of customers. The marketing teams, uh, which use the data to create marketing intelligence reports and uh, account health metrics. We have customer success team, which is vested into understanding the engagement health of our customers. And then last but not least, our product teams, who use the data to understand the usage of our products by our customers, and we also use it for crash reporting. This is an example of the screenshots of various reports that are created today from our data lake and using, as you can see, uh, different reporting tools. The most important part of our solutions is the ability to create predictive analytics for sales and marketing automation. We are merging data from Salesforce and other systems to create high impact predictions, insights, and recommendation to optimize the engagement with our customers. We are focusing on two main areas. The first one is customer acquisition, which is allowing us to bring new business um, and also to offer new products to our existing customers. We do that with uh, solutions like funnel optimization, piracy analytic, and recommender systems. The next set of solutions is under the umbrella of customer success, which focuses on existing customers and making sure that we understand their interactions with the company, we know where they are in their life cycle, are they able to onboard, um, how are they with their adoption of our products, and ultimately be able to predict the retention risk or the risk of churn. We are also able to generate um, actions for our support and sales agents so they can engage in a more intelligent way with the customers. As a result, uh, we have seen three times improvement in demand generation from our funnel optimization. The piracy analytics have been able to bring uh, more than 10 million in billings from piracy. Uh, the recommender systems are allowing our inside sales uh, to know when and what to talk to the customer and what is the right time to do that uh, with account buying readiness um, and various product recommendations. Um, the onboarding health uh, checks whether the customer has onboarded and allows to create actions to our service agents so they can engage with our customers and make sure that they onboard and therefore um, minimize the risk of retention um, down the road. And last but not uh, least, we have accurate predictions of risk of churn and renewal rates. This is an example of how some of those advanced analytic products that we have created in Amazon looks like in Salesforce screen. So these are um, account buying readiness um, predictions that we are exposing to our uh, inside salespeople. Um, they can scroll uh, and pr uh, prioritize their accounts based on uh, their account buying readiness score. You can see that this um, is a pretty high account buying readiness score and the agent is able to understand what drives that score to be high. In addition to that, um, at the bottom of the screen, um, they can look at um, what are the products that are recommended for that customer, so then they can focus their um, talk to the customer uh, better on what are the, the best fits for, for that customer, and those are also created through a predictive, um, predictive models in AWS. So in conclusion, if you have many systems, and um, AWS is a great place to combine all that data and being able to either report on it or build predictive analytics. If you have a data scientist team um, that is mature and it's interested to have the freedom of using different machine learning models, AWS provide that uh, opportunity because they can plug in any framework they want and run their predictions. And yeah, you can integrate today Salesforce with AWS. Um, and it's fairly easy. And based on the recent alliance, it will get even easier as in the upcoming years. Um, AWS provides us with a scalable and serverless architecture, and we are able to really go fast and being able to meet the demands of the business. Thanks, Petana. <laughs> Petana, 
<laughs> you have a wonderful name. I'm going to yes. get fantastic at pronouncing it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And like you mentioned, the alliance and how we're bringing the services even closer together, I'm just looking forward to many more customers and partners being able to do what you guys have done and learning from what you've done as we build these new products. So now I'd like to open it up for questions. Question? You had mentioned earlier that um, you're looking at two models to move data into S3. Um, one was, I think, query-based, and the other was event-based. Which are you using for your Salesforce instances? Well, for, uh, for Salesforce instances, we use uh, Blue, uh, which is fairly new. Uh, but this is uh, really the advantage of the serverless approach, and that's what works the best for us. Yes? You have talked about most of the positive part. Is there anything negative between Salesforce and AWS? Because we are at a stage where we have uh, Salesforce and AWS uh, where we are putting all the data lake in place. But we want to know what are your experiences from a, what are the challenges you have faced? Let me put it in this manner. Um, well, we, we face uh, many, many challenges. I don't know my can you add her mic back on, please? Yeah. Can you turn her mic back on? Go ahead, try. Yeah. So um, there is certainly a level of challenges that we face uh, with the maturity of the um, products that we use. We started, before we used Glue, we used um, other open source tools, um, and we struggle a lot of how to um, figure out the balancing and how do we use AWS in a way that we don't have performance bottleneck and we had to do that on our own. So that was extremely challenging and frustrating. Um, I think uh, moving to AWS Glue specifically for the Salesforce integration allow us not to worry about uh, having to deal with uh, scalability and how to do the balancing of, of the load uh, amongst the different instances. So that was kind of one, one big thing. Um, extracting data from AWS to Salesforce is still an area that um, we kind of not struggle, but it's completely custom. So we are looking forward to see what AWS will be able to offer so then we can have a better way of integrating versus trying to build our own custom integrations or APIs. Uh, so that's kind of one area as well to watch for. Uh, and then just the normal challenges of building a big data platform. <laughs> um, <so. laughs> Uh, uh, my question more on the AWS side with the alliance of AWS and Salesforce, like how are we going to like overcome some of the, the limits we see with the Salesforce platform? I mean, those are like governor limits, the API limits in terms of how much data we can query and how much data uh, we can kind of get out of uh, Salesforce. How much that alliance between AWS and Salesforce is going to help overcome those uh, challenges? Right. Um, so what's fun about the, the relationship we have is that Salesforce is moving more and more of core Salesforce applications onto AWS. So we're working closely on the re-architecture that they're doing and how they're looking at uh, how their data center infrastructure is built out and how their server and application environment is designed. And so as they make that shift, I think that's going to be a key lever that's going to make the back end processing easier and so that the limitations on the front end for accessing that data uh, will evolve. Uh, but even before that is completed, which that'll take time, uh, and we're providing this bridge for you to get data out of Salesforce into AWS, um, we're working closely with their engineering teams to look at places where we can remove those limits and put special hooks together that when you're using this, these new integrations that we built directly together, you would not have those same limits. So um, that's also another way we're trying to enable fast, faster data um, and higher volume uh, of, of access. Uh, again, continuing on the alliance, uh, in terms of the AI model, they both have different AI models. Uh, do you see them combining or providing similar recommendations and not kind of different recommendations? 
So um, I think when you say AI models, you're probably referring to uh, Einstein and, and what's available with Einstein. And so um, Einstein is actually built on AWS, um, and it's a product of Salesforce that runs on AWS. So as a product that Salesforce provides, um, I don't think they're going to rationalize all the models and how things are done in Einstein with how we do them in our underlying services. Now, with that being said, what's really um, how we think about Einstein versus the broader suite of AI services and tools you have with AWS is that, as Satana said, when, as soon as you start thinking about a broader set of data sources and not just Salesforce specific is when we really advise you to kind of go and use the native tool set and services that AWS provides. And that's why we see as a strategic imperative on our side to make sure that we solve the, one of the challenges Svetana talked about where now once you've generated those results, you've built those algorithms, you want to get those results back into Salesforce, that closed loop should be much easier. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, I think so this question has already been asked, but I'd like to get into the specifics. Can you talk about how do you move the data from your data lakes uh, to Salesforce? Now, we run into this issue because we are reaching the bulk API limit, what Salesforce calls it. Now, uh, that's exactly what one of the questions over here was, what are the limitations? So can you specifically talk about like how do you resolve that issue, or do you see that problem at all? Um, I think um, the person who is in charge of designing that uh, integration is sitting right in front of you, uh, and maybe he can answer that in more technical details. <laughs> Okay. Did you hear, sir? Did you hear the, or Pavan or sir? I think sir probably would be better to explain. Right. Okay. So yeah, we have reached that limit and we have uh, encountered that issue, but uh, you know that that depends on how you are accessing your bulk APIs using your Lambda, right? So um, if you have uh, each record by record update, then that would hit your limit. But if you have bulk updates with batch updates, then uh, you should be able to. Uh, govern your limits and and uh, do the updates to Salesforce. Yeah, and I think you, you we can connect. It's probably a larger discussion that has much more technical nuances that it's harder to explain in a you know that setting. So, yeah, great. Uh, again, going back to Alliance, uh, I had a question on: Is there any recommended approach uh, for getting the data from uh, AWS to Salesforce? Yeah, um, so the answer is yes. Um, actually, I, pre I presented a session on best practices um, on Tuesday this week. Uh, so I have another presentation I'd be happy to share with you. Um, I think will be available post-event. Uh, and then we can also set up some additional time. So essentially, in talking to our customers, and I personally have held a lot of conversation with customers to understand what are some of those repeatable patterns that they're seeing that we should productize and, and, and make pre-built. Um, and so what we see is um, there's an area of security. So when you think about the different network boundaries that we have, uh, rationalizing both at an identity level, uh, the different identities in our services, and then also the network trust um, and how to establish the right trust so you don't have to do that on your end. Um, so that's something that uh, we're leveraging one of the AWS services called Private Link that we launched last year as a building block as well as some new capabilities that we're building together that will allow you to ha have access to Salesforce endpoints um, in their APIs directly within an Amazon VPC and using your own, your, your um, internal private IP address space. And so that way you resolve those issues and you're able to leverage those endpoints directly as an endpoint on your network uh, without having to uh, have your data go out to the public internet and then come back in between the two clouds. So this one area of security, both at identity level and network, and then the second area is just how do I get my data out of Salesforce? Um, so we see kind of bulk movement as a pattern. We see event-driven uh, data movement as a pattern. I want to listen on Salesforce platform events, use those events to trigger processing in AWS services. Um, so we're looking at integrating into platform events and allowing you to leverage those. And then also the 
reverse being true as well, where you can have results generated in AWS after processing is completed, and then take those results to raise a platform event natively in Salesforce, and then be able to take action on that within Salesforce as well. Um, then we see a pattern that's really about synchronization, where I have two stores, I want them to stay in sync. I make changes in one, it's reflected in the other, and vice versa. Um, so today, we, a number of customers we talk to have attempted or are currently using Salesforce Heroku of Connect for synchronization. Um, it's at the object level, and then there's also some limits, again, that, that might happen in that scenario. Uh, so that's specifically something we're working with the Heroku team and, and the Salesforce core platform team uh, to either replicate that kind of synchronization capability or allow you to more easily use Heroku uh, with an advanced feature set uh, to bring that data in from a synchronization standpoint. Um, and then last but not least is all the things you heard around AI and machine learning and how to be able to have uh, easier data classification of data that's coming into AWS and then have data preparation services that then allow you to leverage S3, not as just a, a dumb data store, but easily tied into um, you know, the services like Amazon SageMaker for building out machine learning models, uh, as well as a number of other services that we have. So more of those connections uh, leveraging our services as building blocks, but the adding glue, for lack of a better word, no pun intended, uh, to be able to uh, make that a more end-to-end um, -end and seamless experience that's pre-built and aware of the types of objects and types of data that's gonna come over from Salesforce. Other questions? Okay, thanks so much for attending the session. <laughs> <laughs>